to create as many plays for us. I appreciate their sacrifice. They sacrifice their souls. They're going to spend eternal damnation with their souls. And they're doing this to create great pumps for us to trade? How important would you say is risk management in your strategy, Tim? Because shorts are, you have the ability to lose infinite amounts of money, but there's also times, like you said, where if you're long bias, these stocks don't bounce either. So what is your risk management strategy? This is the crazy thing. So short sellers aren't wrong in their fundamental analysis. Like these are crap companies. They do go down. Like short sellers win the majority of the time. But you have those black swans that pop up and it could be any single one of them. Risk management, like sometimes they're just skipping on air. They get halted. The volatility halts. The brokers have issues. I think that it's very, very dangerous to be a newbie short seller. I mean, even like literally like Jack Kellogg, Tim Lento, like Kai Williams, they lost six, seven figures on HKD. Like even the best short sellers that I know are losing big sometimes. Again, you win more than you lose, but newbies just don't have the experience or the know-how. This is why if you are going to short, I encourage you to trade extra small. Risk management is position sizing. You can't put like a little stop loss. Like newbies are like, I'll just put a stop loss in. That way, if I go, if it goes against me, I lose 5%. Ha ha ha. And you know, and you're like, you dumb fucking newbie. Like you, that the stop loss doesn't mean that you can get out right away. Same thing on the long side, you know, the market makers see this hard stops and the market makers love taking it out below key round numbers. Um, and so newbies think that they're protected, but they're just not. So it's really dangerous to trade with size. And then again, I know that many short sellers don't start with size. It's just like, oh, just a little trade. It's up so much. I can make a little. And then you, it's a very slippery slope because you keep adding. You're like, I got to average up. I got to average up. Um, and it's, it's, can you overcome that crazy squeeze? Cause sometimes the squeeze has happened for several days, like Tupperware, um, you know, like junk stocks, like yellow. Um, even if they go bankrupt, like a few days later. Um, but the overall trend is down. So if you do have the patience, then, you know, you can hold for a while and, and still make money. So there's money to be made short selling. It's just risky. Yeah, I think it's very key that you said position size management because a lot of people don't talk about that. They just talk about the max loss, which is you need to have that. But if you're oversizing the stock, number one, the liquidity could be fighting against you and you are your own worst enemy because your losses get exponentially larger. So I've personally found myself that the smaller I size, the more money I actually make because I'm less emotional and I'm able to be more patient on the stock. So I think that's very important. I think people like even long should trade smaller. It's it's crazy how much you can do when it's not like money gets in your head when you're trading big and you know the pressure's on and it changes your whole perspective. You don't think about size or patience or, or anything. It's very, very dangerous, um, you know, with too much size for newbies and for veterans too. Hi. We've got a baby here too. It's not my baby, but it's a baby. Oh, I was like, there's some news coming out to the social medias. Nope, nope, nope. Not my baby. Not my baby. I'm just a babysitter sometimes. So you mentioned the, the stop loss situation, and I was trying to find it on the chart. I'm too stupid to remember, but I do remember the stupid mistake. So James and I were on the phone on RKDA. You mentioned that you know just because you put a stop loss in doesn't mean that you're going to get out. I'm somebody that actually experienced that exact situation. Thank you for your sacrifice. I appreciate your sacrifice. <laughs> You're welcome. I always thank short sellers. I say we appreciate your sacrifice for the greater good, for the greater spikes. You're sacrificing yeah. your money. You're sacrificing your sanity. You're sacrificing your health. Ask not what the short seller can do for you, but what, you know. <laughs> yeah. So it gaps up and then it sells off in the morning. And I'm like, I'm so fucking right. I'm so fucking right. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, it just limits up and gaps out of nowhere. And that, that uh, most, most brokers route their stops through Arca. And the thing that they don't tell people is especially on these small caps, if it limits up higher than 50 cents and it just skips bids and asks completely, then ARCA won't execute you because there's bands of where they allow slippage. And when it gets over that, they won't just execute you at any price. And so I had 3,000 shares roughly. I got 300 off in the limit up. And I, had a, I was like, market stop out of this bitch. Nope, that didn't help at all. And then all of a sudden, I'm stuck 
And then James is like, oh, yeah, I already got out. I was like, you fucking dick. <laughs> you fucking dick. And, and so I'm Look, stuck. We and appreciate all of a sudden your it sacrifice. Opens. Yeah. <laughs> you know? There's so many brave short sellers out there for who we owe so much a debt of gratitude. You know, this is like it's I can make a lot of analogies, but you understand what I'm saying. Like it's these squeezes are amazing. Like promoters, OTCs are, are pretty dead right now. I think a lot of promoters are, are waiting to see how like the Atlas trading trial plays out because a lot of OTC promoters and like shady promoters do what like Atlas trading did. So they're like very worried. So you just don't see that many pumps. You pull up HCNWF. Do you guys remember this one a few months ago? This was like the last great pump that I remember. HTNWF? HCN. HCN. Charlie, Nancy. Hypercharge. Yeah, Look at that pump. That was a beautiful pump, but that was not short sellers. That was like just a, a hard copy like promotion. I, I was literally, I was flying to Dubai with, with Jack Kellogg and we were watching this and it was like crazy. I was in at 60 cents. I was like, let me play it safe. I'm out at 63 cents. I was like, we're flying to Dubai. I don't know if we're gonna land you know, in time. He held it overnight from like 60 to like 87, I think. But still, I, you know, neither of us expected to go to four bucks. That was a, a great pump, but this is a very common thing that promoters used to do. And we just, you know, I say rest in peace. I think a lot of promoters, maybe they're in rehab, um, you know, maybe they're they're in jail, maybe they've sold their email lists, maybe they've burned their email lists. I don't know, but we just haven't seen that many promos. Fortunately, short sellers have come in with much more volume and the stock spike so much more beautifully. Pull up VFS, that was a beautiful short squeeze. I thank all the short sellers listening for their sacrifice for VFS. Whoa. Wow. Oh, yeah. Woo. And then even BFS WW at WW, the warrants kept going. Like, this is how crazy it was, although it finally cracked. Pull up like a VFS WW. Oh, VFF. To, oh, the warrants. Not Weight sorry. Watchers. Not Weight Watchers. But Weight Watchers, <laughs> I, I think. Like, that's cool. But it's man. like, this, these are, this is what's spiking. So I, I just try to focus on whatever's spiking. I'm, I'm grateful for all the volatility. I'm grateful for the plays, whether it's a short squeeze, whether it's a promo. But this is what I'm looking for. And I think more people should focus on these kinds of inefficiencies where the stocks don't deserve to be up that much, but for whatever reason they are. And that creates more predictable patterns than trying to guess like the value if you try to guess the value of a company, I think that you know you just have so low odds, especially if you have a small account, it's gonna to be tough to try to grow your account. I like these inefficiently priced plays. Yep. Something that you mentioned, Tim, is the Atlas trading guys. And I know that you have it out for the promoters. So what do you think about that whole situation with Atlas and uh, just your thoughts on that? I never have it out for anybody. I just, people just have thin skin. Like I always, I have a whole video like thanking the Atlas trading for all their pumps. Like, you know, it was great to buy the pumps. Like even, what was it? Uh, FaZe Clan, F-A-Z-E. I was so grateful to those guys. Like there were so many of them and they would always, they would always like mention the ticker in their little, what, what's the, what's the software they use? Not Discord rooms, Twitch. They have Twitch rooms and like, I can almost guarantee that they were like texting each other being like, I'll mention the ticker at 11 a.m. I'll mention it at 11, 10 a.m. I'll mention it at 11, 20 a.m. And they spiked the stock so beautifully. Now it's like useless, but like FaZe Clan, Atlas Trading, any of these groups that create these inefficiently priced stocks, like I like it. And I always said, you know, to the Atlas Trading, like that, that one guy with the crazy Greek in the last name, he took it personally and he was like, he made a video and he's like, fuck Tim Sykes. I think he like, then, you know, I'm in his like last video before he got busted. Um, I, I don't want promoters to end. Like <laughs> I was, I, I'm grateful for the promoters. Like I, if they have a coke problem, I'll give them, I'll help them with rehab. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever it takes. I don't want to be like, what was that movie with Denzel Washington where he had a coke problem and they didn't want to send him to rehab. So they, they specifically like the lawyer got him like extra coke. I don't want to do that. I want rehab. I want the promoters to live a long life with many You just pumps. want them to live as long as possible to keep pumping as long as possible. To create as many plays for us. I appreciate their sacrifice. They sacrifice their souls. They're going to spend eternal damnation with their souls. And they're doing this to create great pumps for us to trade. Thank you. Thank you. Short sellers. Like if you did, if you did like a, a heart, like examination on short sellers, there could probably be a study that like heart, you know, like the, like, 
I don't know, health, shorting health wise, like probably you have like health risks of short selling. You cut your, your lifespan in half by short selling. Like it's, I appreciate the sacrifice. I want to live a long time. So I'm not into that, but I appreciate people who, you know, are like, you know what? I hate this company. I have a toxic mindset. I'm a, 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 you know, negative leper. And I love being in discord chat rooms and having like fake screen names and fake Twitter accounts. I appreciate <laughs> them so much. We need more of them. That I've never really heard the answer to, but I've always like kind of wondered in the back of my mind is like, how do you feel that some of your students are like teaching now, you know, like you're, you've had like successful students and now they're kind of like teaching some of them have their own discord rooms and stuff like that. Um, I've always wondered like, how do you kind of feel about that? Well, especially the short bias ones. Yeah, especially the short bias ones. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I, I appreciate everyone's sacrifice. Um, I, I think it's very dangerous. I think it's very dangerous uh, to short sell as a newbie. But, you know, someone has to get squeezed to create these great spikes that I love trading. So I don't choose who does it. Um, you know, and I think that we do need more teachers. I appreciate that my students are, are still fully transparent. Like even Alex props to you, you know, for, for talking about that big loss that you had, like we need more transparent traders. So whatever your strategy is, understand, I make a lot of jokes, like don't take things so personally. This goes for everybody out there. Um, but at the same time, like I'm just looking for opportunities, whether it's a short squeeze, whether it's a promo, um, I'm always looking for some kind of catalyst. Um, I love breaking news plays, you know, it, when there's no breaking news, when there's no short squeezes, when there's no pumps, I mean, I don't, there's not much for me to trade. I'm not trying to invest in the long run. So the more discord rooms, the more people, um, that, that short sell, um, I encourage like a lot of like newbie short sellers to try to teach other short sellers and teach them the wrong rules to create even more short squeezes. Like I, I want as many untrained short sellers as possible. Um, just for more squeezes. I don't, I don't take things personally. Like it's, it's, it's all about just more opportunity because when you have more opportunities, not even just for, for earning, like I sold HCN WF way too early, but it was a good lesson. And I think that a lot of people long and short traders will benefit by just seeing so many of these. Like I, I hate it when someone says like, I've never seen a play like this before. That means that you either A, you're not studying like all these crazy supernovas or you haven't studied the past. I think a lot of people would do better by studying the past. I say I'm basically a glorified history teacher. I've got 9,000 video lessons, 2,000 webinars. People don't wanna watch these old ones. Like Tim Grittani gave 70 webinars to my challenge students, but he hasn't really been trading that much. Full-time family, man, God bless. But those webinars are gold because the patterns repeat. I can't say like past performance is not indicative of future returns, but it usually is.